Hello, my name is Wildstag, and thank you for tuning in to another used book review. Today, I'm going to be covering this book, Into the Green, by Charles DeLint. Into the Green is another one of Charles DeLint's stories, just like Wolf Moon that I covered a few months back. This book is about fae and fairy. The green in the title is specifically this connection to or even just the world of fairy and of magic this fairy this fey world is inhabited by a couple unique creatures such as the stag which is a major character i wouldn't say character but force in this book the cowrie which can only really be seen by those with eyes that can see into the green Anarad, the main character of this book, is a traveler, a witch, and a tinker. And she wanders the, her uh, homeland with a harp. It's a story about loss in that the harp she carries for her magic and for her music is named after her deceased husband. She carries it around to memorialize him and in all of her endeavors she feels that he is right there with him with her but it is also a story in a way of dying her homeland's connection to the green is disappearing and being filled with witch finders in a way it's analogous to Christianity's encroachment into the British Isles. And really, I think that is the best way to put it. The map is one larger island that kind of encompasses a smaller island. But the conflict of this story is between Anorad and a few green-sensitive companions or friends or allies. And... This entity called the uh, the glass grow, which is always in italics. It is a device that is that consumes and I guess defeats the green. And a merchant recently brought one into her homeland. It is her desire that it be destroyed or it be closed off, so no more of this evil can come into her land. The glass grow is infectious. It's it consumes all and it inserts itself into which is poisoning them. This is the impression I got from this that she has to find a way to close it off both within herself and within the world. Uh, further she is hounded by by a person that, I guess, looks on his ability to see witchery as evil. He hates himself. He hates that he lives with all these ghosts of people he's killed. It's, like I said, the story about death and carrying death with you and how you live with that and how you grow through that death. And in the end, there's a hopeful not message, but a hopeful ending where a friend or a former lover, I think, of this self-hating villain is offered a new life and a new chance at life by Anorad herself, who offers to be a companion for this, this woman so that they can both heal together in a way. I don't, I don't think heal together is per se the right word, but here it is in the, um, this offer of healing, travel with a tinker to laugh. You've seen yourself how old pains cause new hurts. Allow yourself time to heal. What would you know of old hurts? Anorad thought of those she had loved and lost, her husband, her clan, friends. I have only the one skill, she said. This is the Veda, the um, former lover of the villain. You can always learn another. 
Why would you want to help me? And read again, because I was helped once. I didn't want it. I fought it. But in the end, it made me whole again. What I lost, I still miss. Desperately, sometimes. But I can bear it now. I don't know if I have your courage. I will lend you some, then. Until you find your own. Taking her arm, she led Veda away. Together, they walked through the graveyard, arm in arm, Magaret and Ered sighed, remembering how Lamond had been able to see the cowrie without Halfarl's gift in his blood. She wondered if witcheries could be taught as well as born to. Hadn't Lamond said, "Witchery is merely a word for what we are all capable of," and that's kind of an attitude that is felt throughout all of Charles Dillon's books that this magic is something anyone can become involved with. Another interesting thing about this book is that there's an appendix titled Tunes from the Kingdoms of the Green Isles. All tunes are copyright 1993 by Charles DeLint. And the brief summary says, The following tunes for small harp and other melody instruments are from the repertoire of the Tinker Anorad. And there's a few short lines of music with no lyrics. And then a note at the bottom that says, All tunes written and transcribed by Charles DeLint except for The Loon's Lament, which was written by Charles DeLint and transcribed by John Wood. Thanks, John. True to form, Charles DeLint always, or at least the books I've seen of his, are about fey and fairy of a very druidic and Celtic nature. It's also got themes of longing, I guess, of detachment, of isolation, and finding people that are willing to make you part of their lives, make you a home. This book doesn't have as much of that hominess because it is explicitly about a traveler and a tinker who in his stories are very in touch with that natural, that magical world. But it is about that longing and about that connection to others. And I don't know, it was not hard to read this, but I don't connect with books about death too well because usually they're usually books about death emphasize pain, and that's something I don't personally feel when I think about death. I think about the joy of the person's life and the inevitability of their death and how at least I got to know them while they were alive. And I guess that's part of that healing process in a lot of these books that do talk about death, but that pain is not something I really experience. And so it makes it hard for me to read it, but I'm not sure it'll make it hard for you to read it. I know my perspectives on death and life are not normal. Um, they're not universal. And perhaps someone with a different perspective on life and death would get a different thing out of this book. So I bought this book at McKay Used Books in Manassas, Virginia, and I can tell that because the back cover has this, a uh, sticker, but this is one of those that I do know I had from that bookstore uh, before I came out here to um, New Mexico. So it was a huge used bookstore. McKay's used books, when I went there, was huge. It felt like the size of a full bookstore, like a more common new bookstore. It was very strip mall bookstore in feel. It was tall ceilings, high shelves, rows of them, and it was just shelves as far as you could see. It wasn't like most used bookstores, which feel winding and compact and in a way, 
busy. Not in the sense of busy that there's a lot of people there, but that there's so many books there. It felt unlike most uh, used bookstores. It felt like a very unusual bookstore for its kind. So I don't know what I paid for this, but what I do know is that it was a fun read. Even the parts of the, the theming that I'm not quite as able to relate to, the rest of it was fun. And I think it'd be the kind of book, if you like Charles DeLint or his style of fantasy, style of uh, fantasy. Yeah, that's about all I have to say on this book. My name is Wildstag. Thank you again for tuning in to another used book review.